Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. From Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark Cards bring you Anne Blythe in Home for Christmas on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories and presents as your host one of the most distinguished actors of the American theater, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lionel Barrymore. Once more, we find ourselves nearing the sacred hours of another Christmas. For all of us, the hours hold memories of other holidays, of families gathered together in warmth and affection, home for Christmas. Some years ago, Lloyd C. Douglas wrote a simple, tender little story about a family gathering during the holidays a book that was small, but it had evidently touched a lot of hearts, for it's gone through many printings. Now, this is a story you'll hear tonight. And here to play the leading role is that charming young actress, Anne Blythe. And now, here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you're choosing the Christmas card you want to represent you and all your friends' homes, isn't it nice to know that good taste costs no more? Yes, you can select a Hallmark card, one that perfectly reflects your good taste, and still pay no more. Most important of all, though, is the comfortable knowledge that when you send a Hallmark card, you are also complimenting the good taste of your friends. For to everyone, everywhere, that Hallmark on the back of your Christmas card means you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture, Million Dollar Mermaid, starring Esther Williams, Victor Mature, Walter Pigeon, and David Bryan. And now here's the first act of Home for Christmas, starring Anne Blythe. family had all been scattered for a good many years. Gertrude was in New York, Claire was in Louisville, Nan in Detroit, Fred in California, and Jim in Chicago, all prosperous American citizens, but they'd all come from a small Midwestern farmhouse. And Nan, who had had the care of the farm since the death of their parents, decided that this was the year that all the Claytons should come home for Christmas. It was about the 1st of December when the letter came. Mother, Dad, and I were at breakfast, and Mother sat reading the letter from her sister Nan with first an alarmed and then a rather annoyed look on her face. Oh, now, really, this is just too ridiculous. Nan wants all the Claytons to come home to the farm for Christmas. Well, don't think you're going to rope me at anything like that. As a matter of fact, you're not invited. Nan wants just the original Clayton family. No in-laws, no offspring. Good. You're off the hook, too, Miriam. Oh, I'd like to go. I think it might be fun to spend Christmas in the country. Well, you've never had to spend a Christmas at Wimple. It's a little hick town a hundred miles from nowhere. The house is a big old frame affair. Without any modern conveniences. Oh, it's going to be perfectly awful. Well, then why go? Well, Nan says she's gotten everyone else to agree, and it's the first time they've all been able to manage it. If I don't show up, they'll never forgive me. Oh, Mother, you'll probably have a wonderful time when you get there. Sure, go ahead. Miriam and I will take off of Bermuda. I always wanted to spend Christmas in Bermuda. I... I've never been away from you at Christmas, Jay. Now, don't start getting sentimental about that. We've certainly arrived at a time of life when Christmas is just like any other day, haven't we? Maybe we have. 
I hadn't quite realized it, but maybe we have. How do you feel about Bermuda, Miriam? Mm, not at Christmas, Dad. My roommate invited me to go home with her for the holidays. I'll call her and take her up on it. Well, happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> And so, Christmas week. Mother left for the farm, Dad left for Bermuda, and I took a night train south to spend the holidays with Doris. In the morning, the porter brought me a telegram. It was a frantic message from Doris telling me she had tried to reach me before I left. One of her brothers had been taken ill and the house was quarantined. She wouldn't be able to have me after all. They were playing carols on the train. And the car was full of gaiety and laughter and Christmas packages. I sat there looking out the window, biting my lips so I wouldn't burst into tears. It seemed to me that the whole world was going home for Christmas. But I had no place to go. And then suddenly I, I thought of my mother, my aunts and uncles gathered on that farm in the Midwest. And I knew what I was going to do. The weather was clear and cold the next day. And when I stepped off the train in the little town of Wimple... Miss Eldridge? Oh, yes. I'm Jack Bailey. My folks have the neighboring farm to yours. Your Aunt Nan asked me to meet you. Oh, thanks. I wondered if they'd get my wire. Oh, it came this morning. Oh, here, let me take you back. <laughs> You're going to be delivered by bobsled. I hope you don't mind. Mind? Oh, I'd love it. Let me help you in. Oh, thanks. You know I've always wanted to ride in one of these. There's nothing like them, that's for sure. <laughs> Come on, get up. I know I'm kind of barging in, but I didn't have any place else to go. Did my aunt seem to mind? Not at all. Why should she? At Christmas, it's the more the merrier, isn't it? What's going on at the farm? Are they having fun? <laughs> they seem to be having the time of their lives. I stopped by for a while yesterday, and your Aunt Claire was making mince pies, <laughs> and your mother was making pumpkin pies. She was. Well, that's a pretty big step for Mother. I don't think she's done much more than walk through a kitchen in years. Well, uh, she's not walking through now. I hear she's been elected to roast the oh. turkey. <laughs> well, that's just the way Aunt Nan wanted it. A real old-fashioned Christmas. Everybody pitching in together. I think it's a wonderful idea. Mm. Oh, how beautiful the country is this time of day. Oh, look. There's the first star. Make a wish. I did. What did you wish? What would a girl like you that has everything wish for? Oh, I'm afraid that's between that star and me. Oh, there's something in the air tonight. Something exciting, something wonderful. Is it just me, or do you feel it too? It was in the air the moment you stepped off the train. You wouldn't try to fool a city girl, would you? No. Oh, I'm just trying to tell a city girl I'm... Glad she came home for Christmas. As we turned in at the farm, I could hear voices. And when we pulled to a stop in front of the house, there was my mother, with my aunts and uncles standing in front of the house singing. It was a Christmas greeting such as I had never had before. Watching them standing there together, smiling at me in welcome, I had a sudden feeling of being a part of something warm and wonderful. I was theirs and they were mine, and we were together as we should be at Christmas. And I went into the house through a blur of tears. the tree. What do you think of that? Oh, it's a beautiful tree, Uncle Jim. Some of the decorations on that tree, Miriam, we had when I was a little girl. Oh, Mother, you look so pretty tonight. <laughs> you really look as though you're having fun. Oh, we are having fun. More fun than we thought we would. Oh, I hope it was all right to come. I didn't know what to do when I got the wire from Doris. Of course it was all right. No one should be alone at Christmas. I didn't realize what I'd been missing all these years. Well, you're certainly making up for lost time now. Or trying to. If you mean with the Widow Simmons, you're certainly right. <laughs> Why, Uncle Jim. I should have married her 30 years ago. <laughs> That's what we all told you then, but you wouldn't listen. Well, I didn't want to rush into anything. <laughs> you didn't. You waited five years, and then you got upset when she...
she married someone else. Well, I'd just about made up my mind by then, and it was something of a shock. Oh, I don't believe in waiting. When you found someone and they found you, well, that's all that's necessary, isn't it? If everything's right at the beginning, why wait? Why waste any time that you might be together? Spoken like the young and romantic. Oh. All right. By George, I'll go down and pop the question right now. Oh. Uh, or do you think I ought to wait till after supper? <laughs> it's not too good an idea to propose on an empty stomach, is it? Uncle Jim, you shouldn't even be thinking of your stomach at a time like this. Yes, but I'm hungry. I've been out in the fresh air all day, and don't forget, I helped chop down that tree. Jim, do you want to help ladle out the stew? You bet I do. Oh, what about your proposal, Uncle Jim? Well, after 30 years, an hour more or less isn't going to make much difference. Gertrude, is that dessert of yours ready to come out? Well, let's see what time it is, Ned. My word, I'll say it's ready. Oh, Nan, the Army lost a great top sergeant in you. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that Mother's actually cooking. Your mother always was a very good cook. Well, I guess she hasn't needed to cook much since she was married. Miriam, please don't think I'm being nosy, but is everything all right at home? What do you mean, Aunt Nan? Well, I mean between your father and mother. Gertrude seems a little sad to me. Well, Dad's in Bermuda without her, but that's your fault. You planned this outing. Well, I couldn't have all the wives and husbands and offspring. The house is bulging now. And yet, I thought it was time for the family to get acquainted again. A family is an important unit, an entity in itself. And I believe it's important to remind ourselves of that every now and then, and to take care of the old ties as well as the new. You kind of worry me about Mother and Dad. I've never noticed anything really wrong, but then perhaps I just didn't notice. Well, if the opportunity arises, maybe you'll talk to your mother. Mother and I have never talked about very personal things. I'm not sure I'd even know how to go about it. Oh, Miriam, that Bailey boy is on the telephone. He wants to invite you to an ice skating party. Oh, how nice. Where's the phone? In the hall. I hope he can get me some skate. She's a nice girl, Gertrude. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, that Bailey youngster, does he have a girl? Well, I don't really know. I was just wondering if he had one now. You're a very quiet city girl. <laughs> oh, I wish you'd stop calling me that. If you don't, I'm going to start calling you country boy. <laughs> Would you like that? You said it. <laughs> You're so full of compliments, I'm beginning to think you're Irish. Oh, I'm an Irish grandfather. You want to know something you always said about the Irish? <laughs> what? He said they fall in love at first sight. Oh, and do you know what my Irish grandmother used to say? What? Take any compliment an Irishman pays you with a grain of salt. Well, your grandmother can hardly be said to have a first-hand knowledge of me. <laughs> oh, but she had a first-hand knowledge of men. Jack, did your family come from here? Sure. Dad courted my mother right on the same ice pond. Yes, of course he did. And my father and mother must have come here, too. Oh, I can just imagine how they must have looked. Both of them all dressed up, their eyes and cheeks shining from the cold, in love with the world and the night, more and more with each other. Jack, I, I must go home. Home? Something wrong? I, I don't know. I think it's just possible that something might be in... I can't wait any longer to find out. Well, can't wait for a couple of hours? Oh, Jack, it's Christmas. Surely at this time of year, even more than any other, we should put the happiness of those we care about before anything else. I'm worried about my mother. All right, Mary. I'll take you home. She came a long way to come home for Christmas. I want it to be a happy Christmas. Do you think you can make it a happy Christmas? Now, my daughter... I can only hope I can. I'm not as well acquainted with my mother as I wish I were. If we do get a little closer while we're here, then I, too, will have really found my way home for Christmas.
we'll return to the second act of Home for Christmas, starring Anne Blythe. At Christmas time, all of us love to do something special for our favorite little folks, for nieces or nephews, the children of our friends, and the youngsters who live next door. One of the surest ways to make a hit with the boys and girls you know is to send each of them a Hallmark Magic Money Tree or a Hallmark Christmas Card Stocking. Every money tree and stocking is a big, bright card with ten slots to hold ten shiny new dimes. Not only are they fun to receive, but the children will be pleased as punch to have money of their own to buy anything their hearts desire. You'll find Hallmark Magic Money Trees or Stockings are the perfect answer to that old question, what shall I send Susie this year, or Mike, or Jimmy, or Jane? And at the fine store where you buy all your Hallmark cards, you'll find Hallmark money enclosures for grown-ups, too, in many attractive styles. So why not choose yours tomorrow? Remember that Hallmark is right on the back, the famous Hallmark that says, you care enough to send the very best. Now back to Lionel Barrymore in the second act of Home for Christmas, starring Anne Blythe. <laughs> had said about her mother made a deep impression on Miriam. She said goodnight to Jack at the door, and when she went in, she found her mother alone, sitting beside the tall, gaily decked Christmas tree. I sat down beside Mother. At first, she hardly seemed aware, but finally she turned toward me. Those old ornaments certainly bring back a lot of memories. That star on top is seen more Christmases than I have. You'd never know it. Up there on top with the lights on it, it looks new and shining and full of hope. <laughs> Looked that way to me once when I was your age. It was the Christmas I met your father. Oh, I wish he were here now. It doesn't seem right to be spending Christmas without him. Oh, he wouldn't like it. He'd think all this was uncomfortable and kind of foolish. Oh, how do you know? That's the way you thought it would be. Yes, I, I know. But you, your father and I have gotten away from all those things. Christmas hasn't any special meaning for us anymore. Can't you make it mean something again? I wouldn't even know how to begin. You and Dad began your lives right here in this room, beside a tree very much like that one. If you were only here now, sharing the same memories, Living the same moment. But he's in Bermuda. And there's nothing to be done. Oh, maybe there is. Maybe there is. Hello, operator. I want to place a long-distance call. Yes. Person to person, please. Hello. What are you doing out here at this time of night? Oh, I... I just wanted to walk around and think a little. What are you doing out? Well, I wasn't sleepy, and I wanted to walk around and think a little, too. You mind company? No, of course not. What were you thinking about? Oh, I... I was trying to decide whether I believe in love at first sight. Do you? I guess I have to. I seem to be stuck with it. Of course, I know I must sound like an idiot to you. It's a romantic season. There's no doubt about that. Hi, kids. Merry Christmas. Hello, Hello Mr. Jim. Clayton. Well, what do you think happened? I popped the question to the widow, <laughs> and she hooked me. She did? Oh, no. Isn't that a shame? Oh. After all these years of happy bachelorhood, she oh. finally hooked me. Yes, you old St. Nicholas, bend oh. here this way. Don't you tell a single soul what I'm going to say. You know... I think you were right. There is something in the air, and it seems to be catching. At least I hope it's catching. Miriam, do you think... Oh, Jack, please don't ask me any questions tonight. 
My mind's on a love story, but it isn't my own. Oh, I see. But, Jack, I think if you still have something to say, I'll be more than ready to hear it tomorrow night. On Christmas Eve, the friends and neighbors came from far and wide to join in the celebration at the Clayton House. It was Christmas at its merriest, at its jolliest, at its most Christmassy. There were songs sung, recitations from Christmases gone by recited again. There was laughter and now and then a tear or two. But the faces were shining with joy and goodwill. And of all those present, only my mother's eyes were sad. And then on the stroke of midnight, a knock was heard on the door. Now, who on earth is that? This hour of the night. Well, I can tell you who it should be. At this hour, it should be St. Nicholas and no one else. <laughs> That's who it should be. Oh, well, isn't anyone going to open the door? Oh, you open it, Mother. All right. Merry Christmas. Jay! Oh, Jay. Darling. Well, what are you doing here? Miriam, your father's here. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Your father's here. Later, when the party had reached its climax and quieted, and the guests were gone, and only the members of the family and Jack were left beside the fire, Aunt Nan turned to me. Miriam, everyone had something to say tonight but you. You didn't sing or recite or do any of the things the rest of us did. I know. When our father, your grandfather, was alive, he made it a custom to call on either the youngest or the oldest for some sort of Christmas message. Now, since you're the youngest, I think we'll call on you tonight. Well, I... Well, first of all, it gives me a feeling of great warmth and happiness to be with all of you on a night like this. And gives me an even deeper feeling of happiness to be in this house with my father and mother, where their lives and, in a sense, my life began. I know that when grandfather and grandmother were alive... This house was a sanctuary where belief in the traditions of religion was preserved in sincerity and simplicity. A house where faith was the substance of all hopes and sufficient evidence of things unseen. This is the night of eternal promise, the birth date of hope, of faith. We kneel tonight all over the world in common worship of the Son of God born so long ago in the manger of Bethlehem. We kneel in the common prayer that the promise of his birth be kept, that at last, for all people and for all time to come, there will be peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Wonderful Christmas Eve I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Miriam? Uh-huh? The party's over. Your mother and father are happy. Will you listen now to what I want to say? <laughs> oh, of course I will. Miriam? Oh, yes, Dad. Thanks for that phone call. We uh, won't mention it to your mother. No, of course not. It was a pretty good idea, man, was it that? Good night, sir. Good night, Dad. Now, where were we? I was supposed to be listening to what you wanted to say. And I've wanted to say it ever since I saw you get off that train. Miriam, darling, will you... Yes. You will marry me? <laughs> oh, yes, darling, yes. Oh, Jack, isn't it funny? When I got off that train, I felt as though I were coming home for Christmas. And I have. I've come home for Christmas to stay.
Slice and Lionel Barrymore will return in a moment. Perhaps you've already read about the Hallmark Christmas card sleigh or Hallmark Christmas card train in magazines or newspapers. But have you actually seen them at your favorite store? They're making Christmas card conversation this year. And here's why. The Hallmark train and Hallmark sleigh are merry Christmas cards in themselves and will hold all the other cards your friends receive. Each one can be set up in a jiffy to decorate a mantle or table or window ledge. The Hallmark train has box cars, an engine and caboose, and red and white candy stripe wheels. And the Hallmark sleigh is just like Santa's, with prancing reindeer and old St. Nick himself. If you're looking for the unusual in Christmas cards, you can't miss with either the Hallmark train or Hallmark sleigh. And as card holders, they'll be right in sight all through the season to remind your friends of your warm wishes. You'll find them wherever Hallmark cards are sold, priced at just one dollar each. And, of course, the hallmark is there, the famous symbol that says, you care enough to send the very best. Here again is Lionel Barrymore. And, Blythe, you were wonderful. If anyone needed help to get into the Christmas spirit, you certainly provided it with your performance. (laughs) Thank you for coming to Hallmark Playhouse tonight. Thank you very much for inviting me, Mr. Barrymore. And as for the Christmas spirit, why, that just seems to be overflowing here at Hallmark Playhouse and all over the country as far as Hallmark cards are concerned. I understand that during Christmas week, Hallmark is going to present three great Christmas programs on their radio and television shows. I hear, too, that the Hallmark Art Award winners have been announced and are being exhibited during the holidays at the Wildenstein Galleries in New York. Yes, 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 and that's a beautiful exhibit, then. One I know anyone who is in New York now through January the 11th would enjoy seeing. The exhibit is the second International Hallmark Art Award of 100 prize-winning watercolors. Now, these were chosen from 5,000 entries submitted by artists from 35 different countries. All the paintings are on the Christmas theme, and from the reports I've heard... The exhibit at the Wildenstein Gallery on 54th Street, New York, is beautiful. And well worth seeing. And it's free and open to the public until January the 11th, when it will go on tour to other cities in the country. As for the special Christmas programs Hallmarks will present during Christmas week, I'm going to let Frank Goss tell you all about them. It'll be a pleasure, Mr. Barrymore, particularly since you are going to present your wonderful characterization of Ebenezer Scrooge in Charles Dickens' Immortal Christmas Carol next Sunday on the Hallmark Playhouse. And then on the Hallmark Hall of Fame, Sarah Churchill will be hostess next Sunday to Miss Kate Smith, who will give her heartwarming interpretation of the Christmas story, The Small One, for the first time on television. And then on a special Hall of Fame broadcast, Hallmark cards will again televise Giancarlo Minotti's opera, A Mall and the Night Visitors. On Christmas Day, 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, consult your paper for local time and channel. Thank you, Frank, and until next Sunday, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer-director is William Gay, our music was composed and conducted by David Rose, and our script tonight was written by Gene Holloway. Anne Blythe appeared through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, producers of the Technicolor production Against All Flags, co-starring Errol Flynn and Maureen O'Hara. The role of Jack was played by Eddie Firestone, with Margaret Brayton as Gertrude, Myra Marsh as Nan, Ted DeCorsia as Jason, and Polly Bear as Jim. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Lionel Barrymore in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.